Hi everyone, Kim here, Northern California, Zone 9B, and I'm ready to take you on a veggie garden tour here at Olive City Permaculture. Now, because of the way I like to mix in flowers and herbs and even some fruit, well, you're gonna be seeing more than just veggies on this tour. And I'll be giving some tips on some specific plants here and there. And just in case you thought it was too late to start direct sowing some veggies, it's not. I'm still sowing seeds today. So let's get going before it heats up. It's supposed to hit 100 Fahrenheit today and I definitely want to be inside before that happens. Well, Project Save the Artichokes worked. At least in the sense that the bees are definitely still attracted to these flowers. Are they at their ideal beauty? No, but they're still beautiful and the bees still love them. There's the artichoke when it's about to open. Here it is after it's been open a few days. Here it is after about a week. And after about two weeks, it's starting to lose all its little string-like petals. But all in all, I'm glad I went to the effort to pick up the fallen artichoke and try to save them. Oh, this bee feels like he's really discovered something. This artichoke is just starting to open, so he's the first to arrive, probably. So what's going on in this bed? Well, it's my squash and watermelon bed, and as you can see, I have all the little seedlings that have come up covered in these black baskets, and that's because this is the second time I've seeded this bed. The first time, the squirrels came in and devoured all of the plants when they were about this big. Now, if this plant looks a little odd, it's because I just took off this cage about two minutes ago. It looked like that. As you can see, this one has pushed up the cage from the bottom, so it's not really doing a lot of good anymore, and it's just, you know, crowding all the leaves. But I was trying to get them as big as possible before I release them. At the same time, I'm reinforcing a nearby fence where I found a couple of squirrels had managed to uh, find a place to get through. I should be done with that in the next day or two, and then I can release all of these. So what I've got all down here is Moon and Stars watermelon. That's why you can see these yellow spots on the leaves. That's not a disease. That is actually what Moon and Stars watermelon leaves look like. And the watermelons themselves, if you watched my channel last year, you saw some of them when I harvested them. They're a deep dark green. They have lots of little yellow dots all over them, which are the stars. And then they have one big yellow orange circle, usually between three quarters of an inch to uh, an inch and a half in diameter. And that's the moon. So yeah, I have a bunch of moon and stars watermelon. There's some more in there. I mean, I have a lot. And then these over here, now I've got two in there. So somewhere they're too crowded together. What I'll do is separate them and spread them out in this bed and maybe other places too. But these are uh, butternut squash. And then right down here, I have some zucchini. That's the squirrel's favorite. They just love the zucchini leaves. And I actually had four large zucchini plants here for a few weeks uh, before the squirrels decided to eat them. That's when I decided, okay, I've got to cover all of these. Now, what is this over here, this cardboard picking out? Well, I'm widening my path. I only had it about a foot and a half out from the bed, and now, as you can see, I'm gonna go all the way over to the other bed. So I add a little bit to it every day or two as I have time. Over here by the wall, I definitely have some geranium I need to get in and deadhead. And this is some kabocha squash in here, as well as some uh, long Chinese red noodle beans. I didn't have enough baskets for all of them. And you can see the birds have come in and eaten those seedlings. So I may plant some more of those noodle beans at the back, but I also have a whole lot of them coming up over here. And then in the front, I've got a bunch of kabocha squash, which I probably will take out several and plant them in other places. In the bed next to all the watermelons and butternut and zucchini, I've got peppers and yeah, weather did a number on these when I transplanted them, about 
oh, a third of them maybe it died out and I had to replant, but I've still got some that managed to hang on from the beginning. This is one of them, a Cubanel. Got some empty spots to fill and some baby ones that I've put in recently, a Buena Malata. These two are barely hanging on. I don't know if they're gonna make it or not, but I do think I see new growth there. These are two tequila sunrises. Here we've got a sweet banana and this one is a mystery. I think it's a Tunisian baklada. Now on this side, I've got probably the biggest one out here on this end of the garden, and that is an Italian pepperoncini. There's a little Italian pepperoncini and another uh, Buena Malata I recently transplanted. This corn looking plant here is actually a volunteer from last year. Uh, I grew broom corn sorghum here, so that's what that is. And this is a Tunisian buckludi. In the middle of the bed, I have a bunch of gladiola. All right, and at the bed next to them, I have my irises, my struggling calendula. This one needs deadheading again. There's a new one back there. Here, I've got a couple of Georgia flame peppers, some more Italian pepperoncinis. These really have done well this year compared to almost all the others. The Cubanelles and um, also the Loose Chower, the one I'm experimenting with to make paprika, it's done well too. Here we have another newer uh, calendula, as well as right here. And these are two violet sparkle peppers. And in a container up in the middle of the garden, I've got a loose chower pepper. That's the paprika pepper I'm playing with this year. And it's blooming, so hopefully we're gonna get some peppers growing on it soon. I'm gonna plant several more of those now that I know where it likes to grow. Another squash bed where I've had to resort to covering the seedlings till they get bigger. And this is a bunch of delicata squash. And this one here, I actually think is not a delicata. You see, I had the bed planted. I think it was with zucchini. These plants were huge that were in here. There was about eight of them, including this one. And I came out one morning and they were all eaten to just the stems. And I covered this one and it's finally started to grow back actually. At that point, I reseeded the bed with delicata and kabocha and covered the seedlings as soon as they came up. So I have a bunch of delicata in here. I'll probably spread them out. Uh, there we got a kabocha, another kabocha. Now here I've got some garlic scapes. I didn't even know I had a few garlic in here. I'm not really sure why I did that, but they're here. So I'm gonna cut off the garlic scapes because you can do so many great things with those. You can puree them and put them into hummus. You can chop them up like you would a green onion and mix it in with basically anything you're cooking that you want some garlic flavor in. They have an amazing garlic flavor. I have to be careful with garlic. I can't have too much of it, but garlic scapes seem to be perfect. And one thing that's really fun to do is to chop them up raw and put them in scones or muffins or biscuits. That's really nice. Now here you can see I have cut back a ton of my walking onions and I'm actually gonna dig these up and transplant them, but I did wanna show them to you. So I left a few uncut, here they are at the top. They have a lot of little bulbets, as you would call them. Now I can break this piece off like like I've done with this to show you that out of each of those bull beds an onion will grow so you could separate each one of these and plant it in a pot or in the ground and it would grow a whole new plant or you can plant the whole thing together or break it in half and it would grow a new clump of walking onions like this you also have the option of breaking these apart and popping them into food, sauteing them because they taste like, well, what they are, onion. Now, again, with my stomach issues, I can't eat regular onions. They really bother me. However, walking onions, the green part and the little bulbets do not bother me at all. So that's what I use for all my onion needs. And as you can tell with the way that they uh, reproduce, mine do this twice a year, you will very quickly have a never ending supply of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of walking onion plants, which you can give to others or continue to use yourself. One of the fun things to do if you cut them back earlier than this, you could still do it now, but I like to do it a little bit earlier, 
is you dry this stem and uh, then grind it up into a powder and you have onion powder. Great for flavoring when you're cooking. All right, so in this bed, well, right outside of it, I've got some Mexican poppies that just, uh, I was gonna say volunteered, and in a sense that's true, but what it actually was is I had a little one gallon pot with a couple of pieces of the Mexican poppy. Uh, probably they were about this size or smaller, and they didn't have any roots or anything. They broke off of a plant uh, I had out front. And I popped them in that one gallon pot and I set that pot right there on the right of this bed. And that was a year ago. And uh, this is what happened. <laughs> the pot I moved away, but yeah, Mexican poppies spread. Now they're easy to pull out, their roots are not deep, but I just love the look of them. In the middle of the bed, I've got a gorgeous echinacea, purple coneflower with lots of blooms coming on. That makes an absolutely uh, gorgeous, delicious and healthy tea. And what have I got growing in here? Well, I direct seeded some melon. So these are my favorite melons here. And that would be the Emerald Gym melons. And so I'm gonna let them get bigger and separate them and plant them throughout this bed. I have one growing in a pot here. And on the other side of the bed, I have my other favorite melon, which is Noir de Carme. So I have some of those seedlings coming up there. And my borage bed, <laughs> my volunteer borage jungle is gone. I cut most of it down. However, I left the new growth that is putting out beautiful blue blossoms and attracting hundreds of bees to the garden. I left them growing. So in this bed, I have some gorgeous and wonderfully smelling society garlic. Just look at those purple blossoms. I wish you could smell them. They smell wonderful. And you can use them in cooking. I also have some rescue tomatoes that were at the store for 75 cents. I've got two of them here. And they look super yellow when I got them. But now they are bringing up new growth and tomatoes. I think these are super sweet 100s. So yeah, I'm bringing them back from the brink of death so I can have tomatoes. I couldn't resist 75 cents. And here I've got, let's see, that's a little kabocha. Here I've got some cherry tomatoes I planted. I think they're husky cherries. Some marigolds. I have one loofah plant hanging on here, but it doesn't look too strong, so I'm not sure how it's gonna do. This is compost tea I'm making. I put collard leaves in here, and I put borage leaves in here, and I put other things too, but those two things, especially the collard leaves, man, do they make a very nutritious fertilizer. And the plants look so much better after I give them a feed with this, so I'm planning to do that this week. Another husky cherry tomato with some tomatoes. Now in the bed beyond this, I have a bunch of gladioli. And the ones in the pot in the middle are already blooming a lovely red. The ones that are planted on either side of the pot are different colors and they're getting ready to bloom. They've sent up their flower spikes. So I'm really happy about that. They just were planted in, I think, April. And I wasn't sure they would bloom this year, but they're definitely going to. And along here, I have my red roselle hibiscus. They have struggled with the weather going from super cold to three days of really hot and then back to super cold, but they are finally starting to take off. So I'm pretty encouraged about that. The ones on this side, for whatever reason, are doing even better overall than the ones on the other side. The only difference really between the two sides is that this side gets just a tad more sun in the afternoon. In any case, these are an autumn fruiting plant with their absolutely beautiful deep pink hibiscus blooms. And you don't harvest the calyxes for tea and jam until mid to late fall. So they have plenty of time to branch out, grow huge, and produce tons of lovely flowers and amazingly delicious and healthy calyxes. I, I just can't even wait for that because the jam is so, so good. What a discovery that was last year to make that for the first time.
This bed's kind of a hodgepodge. I've got my osteospermum in the middle, which I've been cutting back and letting it spread out. Here I have one of three tomato plants that I started from seed, sun gold. However, all three of them are fruiting now. And as they turn color, I'm realizing these seeds are not sun gold. They came out of a packet that said sun gold, but they are not sun gold. I'll show you the other two in a minute. Uh, here I've got a Swiss chard. I've got some lovely sage grass there in a pot with a mulberry tree that I have grown from a, a seedling here on the property. Some more compost tea. And in here I've got baby butterbush squash. Same with here. This one was larger before I covered it and you know what happened to it. My potted lime tree that I've been meaning to take out of the pot and put in a bigger pot for at least a year or two now. And I didn't get to it this year either because of my bout with a severe illness a few weeks ago. But I still have plenty of limes on this tree. It's funny with limes. Well, lemons too at first because they're green at first. Um, they're hard to see. And you really don't realize how many you have until you know you really really look so I'm happy about that I do love my limes I like to freeze them and then I can use them whenever I want some more borage here next to my Virginia Itea sweet spire the blooms that were white are now turning brown I love this plant because of the leaves in the fall they turn just beautiful autumn colors here I have a thyme very old thyme smells amazing and it's starting to go to bloom now and in the bed beyond it i have some coreopsis looking sunny and cheerful and a bunch of swiss chard and on this side of the coreopsis i have a seedling that is a what is that oh it's a sugar pie pumpkin and some more society garlic growing here plus another sugar pie pumpkin Hey, just popping in to say, if you are liking this video, I'd really appreciate it if you'd hit the like button. Thank you. This deep green full plant looks so healthy. It will be sending out many, many red blooms throughout the summer and fall. It's a pineapple sage and oh my gosh, makes the best tea. Smells just like pineapple. Mm. Under that netting, which did absolutely no good because basically it was like a tunnel, I had some corn-filled pumpkin had being the operative word and I will have to replant that and that is a blackberry and so is that actually the blackberry plant it was one of those I got it from the store got it home and found it had been broken off at the base but look at that I planted it and it's coming back grapefruit tree sending out new growth that's good and here is a red roselle hibiscus I planted in a bucket much earlier than I planted my bed and you can see how it's already filled out massively that's encouraging and this beautiful plant, I think they call it a burning bush or a smoke bush, something like that. I just love the leaves, the color of those leaves. And here is an improved Meyer lemon. I'm happy to see blossoms, lots of new lemons coming on. It has some lemons on it already, but it's having another round of blossoming as well as lots of new growth. So it really likes its new home. I just got this this year. It's doing really well. And then we have the back of the garden with lots going on in it, including flowers and berries and trees. Now here are those two other tomato plants that I started from seed and the seed packet said sun gold. And I'm telling you, those are not sun gold. <laughs> sun golds turn a very vibrant orange. These are going to turn red. And I'm sure they will be amazingly delicious, but I don't know what they are. Here's the other one. Um, again, they're turning red, so they're not sun gold. So I'm going to have to go find some sun gold, either actual plants, starts, or maybe try seeds again. But at this rate, in mid-June, I think I'm going to go for plant starts. I've got to find them. They're my favorite cherry tomato. Behind these two sun gold, not sun gold, cherry tomato pots, I've got my largest sunflower. It's about five feet, four inches tall at this point. 
and I'm happy with it. I'm not happy with the fact that I planted about 20 of these and uh, that's the only one that came up. <laughs> Admittedly, it was an old packet of seeds, but I'm still disappointed. So I recently planted some more and um, they're just starting to come up in this bed. Another pineapple sage. I did plant some zucchini. There's one under there. There's another one that just poked through. I need to cover them up and I'm gonna be planting a lot more zucchini in this bed and protecting them until they get bigger. I am behind with my zucchini. There's another sunflower that has just come up. The herb bed is doing great. My lemon balm, been harvesting and drying it regularly for tea. It's finally starting to go to blossom. So there's gonna be a lot of little yellow blossoms all over it soon. I have my purple blooming oregano there, which I cut way back. And my chicken's favorite green sorrel that I also love and stir fry. This plant is five or six years old now and just keeps going strong. Here next to it, I've got some echinacea, at least four and a half feet tall now, and it's about to bloom. And then I've got my winter savory, which has volunteered down here outside of the herb garden. Got some lime thyme down there going to bloom. I do let my herbs go to bloom for a while before I cut them back. Uh, this oregano went nuts. Um, I think I cut back probably 60% of the plant. <laughs> you can see a bunch of dead stems there in the middle, but this will fill out nicely again. So that or I'll take the whole thing out. We'll see. Oregano around here just goes mad, spreads everywhere. Here, some gorgeous tricolor sage. It's doing really well here. So is the marjoram. My rue plant, which I may or may not keep. I'm not using it as much as I used to. It's actually, you know, kind of a little bit of a dangerous plant. I wouldn't cook with it at all. I know in Africa, some of the countries there, like Ethiopia, use it in their coffee, but I don't recommend cooking with it or using it. What I used to use it for is drying it and putting it in like little uh, cotton bags. It's a good, insect repellent, mosquito repellent, um, moth repellent, that kind of thing. But I don't you find myself using it as much anymore. The bugs aren't bad around here, so I'm probably not going to keep growing that. And if you watched my video back, uh, uh, maybe it was January, maybe March, not sure. It was a garden tour video, and I showed that this lemon verbena plant was just a bunch of sticks. And in fact, I think even in April, it was still just sticks. I cut it way back. And just in the last two months, it has pushed out enormously and gotten tall again. And as I always say, this is the mm, best smelling plant I've ever grown, ever smelled anywhere. And it makes the best tea. Lemon Verbena. I just had to show you the Lantana. And... Do you see the butterfly? Yes, the lantana is always full of butterflies and hummingbirds because it is just so gorgeous and so vibrant. If I was a pollinator, I would definitely be attracted to lantana. Here's more. I have four large bushes of lantana and they come back year after year. They look completely dead in the winter, bare sticks, and they're kind of late coming out. So I have bulb plants that come out first in bloom, planted all around them. And then after those die back, the lantana fills in. My pink crepe myrtle is just starting to send up its buds. And the snapdragons here are looking pretty still. Now this wallflower, Though the flowers are pretty, it's looking a little tired. I'm gonna prune it back. I'm also gonna take it out of the pot and add some more soil and kind of break up the roots a bit. I think that'll help it. This purple wallflower, Erysimus, on the other hand, still looks fantabulous. Super tall, growing strong. And my green crepe myrtle that sends out purple blossoms is looking healthy. Hopefully it'll start sending out its buds soon. I recently moved 
one of my mulberry trees back here. A little afternoon shade for these plants. Right next to it, I have my walking onion bordered berry bed. So I have blueberries, some of which are getting ripe, and raspberries, which I've been picking for weeks. And it's still ripening more of them and growing more new ones. My gooseberries, huh, one of my disappointments this year because I had several dozen of them. They look like this. They look like a very round green grape. And so they're kind of hard to spot amongst all the green leaves. There's another one. Here's one that is just beginning to blush. And what happened was the first two dozen of them, well, they darkened and darkened and they were getting to be just the right red color and I was gonna sample them and something got them. Assuming birds. And I was so disappointed when I came out and saw that. So I think I'm gonna wrap some tool around these two gooseberry plants now so that the last dozen or so berries I get to have for myself. The strawberries in here, still sending out more berries. Oh, there's a ripe one. I've just been enjoying these in the garden every morning as I water. And another one. That one still needs another day or two. My canna lilies are coming up nicely outside of the walking onion border. I'll be looking forward to them blooming. I also have some strawberries growing in this crate on top of a picnic table right outside my laundry room. And it is uh, pretty full of some ripe strawberries. So I'm gonna pick those right now. That looks like a very yummy snack or maybe a smoothie. And there's still lots more strawberries and blossoms going on in here. One of the many olive tree seedlings that I planted and is growing like crazy. Some gorgeous Rebecca. I love Rebecca when it does well. It's so sunshiny and happy. Got a little breeze going on. Pretty pink and purple alyssum, but also there are two olive seedlings. The way that I dig them up out of the ground around the property, I pop them in a pot get them a little bigger and then transplant them to their own space once they have some good solid root systems. Another blueberry plant that I just started this year, real small and it has grown nicely. I think I'll have berries on it next year. And these beautiful blue flowers that I always forget their name. This is some purple alyssum in the same pot as my kumquat tree, which is sending out a lot of new growth. And back here next to the duck pen, I have a crate full of, well, if you could smell it, you would know chocolate mint. This stuff is uh, outstanding for iced tea. Some more beautiful echinacea. Purple coneflower. So many great uses for it, you know, in addition to it being just a lovely part of the garden. One of my brand new, uh, Owari Satsuma trees. I didn't think it would fruit the first year, and it did. It lost most of the fruit, but there are still a few hanging on. And on my patio in some large grow bags, I have three Jimmy Nardello peppers growing now, looking good. And next to that, I have a large bread and salt tomato, and I have started a bunch more bread and salt tomatoes. This is a larger tomato and it just sounded really delicious, so I'm giving it a try. Next to that, I have some alyssum and this wild chicory that I transplanted. And that is what the bloom of a wild chicory looks like. And you can grind the seeds to make a coffee substitute. And in the next grow bag, I have got, in addition to this beautiful plant, I have some tomato seedlings coming up. These are evil olives. And soon we'll have more tomato plants growing. And the corkscrew willow tree looks just lovely against the olive tree behind it. 
with the sun starting to go down. Yes, these last few minutes of the tour, I actually waited to do until afternoon when the back of the garden was in shade. <laughs> And this little corner is mostly green right now, but it should start being very colorful very soon. You might recognize a red roselle hibiscus right there. That's gonna have the gorgeous hibiscus blooms and the deep, deep pink calyxes in the fall. I've got some petunias there. They should spread out. These moms are a gorgeous crimson when they bloom soon. Those snapdragons should be blooming again soon. Oh, that is some blueberries that should be ripening mint, more moms just beyond that, some snapdragons already in bloom. So I've got this one rhubarb in this pot. It's doing okay. My rhubarb along the edge of the new chicken coop is doing great though. I'll show it to you in a sec. And right here, we'll just move this asparagus here. Ah, Yes, right here, I see I've got zinnias. These are the little Lilliput zinnias and they've come back from last year. So those should be in full bloom in a few days. Looking forward to seeing that. These pink cosmos are doing really well. And here is a very pretty agastache. And here's some of that rhubarb I mentioned. I've got two large plants growing here in this raised bed. They look great and I actually need to get in there and harvest some of those stalks. Then over next to them in the ground, I have some more rhubarb and it actually is doing very well. They started off super small. They were a little uh, irritated with us when we put in these posts for the new chicken run, but they've uh, recovered and they're growing well now. And they even managed to get through this 100 degree day with little shade. They're a little drooping right now, some of the leaves, but mostly that's because I need to get in there and harvest these stalks and make some rhubarb pie. The loquat tree is doing magnificently in this location. It has sent out a second main trunk, so it's like a Y and I like that a lot, sending out a lot of soft new growth at the top. This says it's very happy here, so I'm very happy with that. No fruit this year, but maybe next year. One thing that does have fruit though that I am super excited about, let me show you. I have two autumn olives, which I just planted this spring. I totally did not think that they would fruit, but, but I just discovered today that they do indeed have fruit on them. They're kind of hidden, so I didn't notice at first. Those little, little things are going to be the autumn olives and they're spread throughout on the branches. The camera doesn't want to focus on them, but they're right there behind my finger. There's a few more. They're all over the plant, but not easy to see. Let's look on this other bush. Okay, right in there in the center, do you see all those darker little things? Those are going to grow into autumn olives. There's a couple dozen right there, and they're all over. So they start off a lighter green and start turning darker. I tested these fruits a couple years ago at a nursery where they were uh, giving out samples of unusual fruits, and I love the taste of them. They're very tangy, uh, just the kind of fruit I love. They're small, not super small. They're uh, kind of an oblong shape. And the ones I tried were probably three fourths of an inch long, and they were so good. Now I've been told that autumn olives are like a weed in the eastern United States, but not so out here in the west. And I have them in pots, so I don't need to worry about that. I'm just very happy that they're going to be fruiting a bit this year. Look at those pretty buttercup yellow gazanias. I love gazanias because they're hardy, they spread really easily, and they come in so many colors. More pretty gazanias. Look at that one. I think that might be my favorite. I just thought I'd end the tour now with a view of one of my Japanese maples. Isn't it looking gorgeous? So thanks for joining me on the tour today. I hope you enjoyed it. Maybe you discovered a plant you'd like to grow. And as I always say, remember you can create the garden and the life that you want. So why not start right now? See you next time everyone.